Coin on. Hey there, YouTube Coin community. It's Dustin with CoinOp, and today we are going to take a comprehensive look at coin searching Buffalo Nickels. So let's dive right on in. Now, the Buffalo Nickel can be a very fun series to collect and get into, especially when it comes to error and varieties. There's a lot to look for in the Buffalo Nickel series. Now, the Buffalo Nickel series starts in 1913, and they run all the way to 1938. Now, they also did produce Jefferson Nickels in 1938 as well. So, the Buffalo Nickel ran from 1913 to 1938. So it ran for 25 years. Now, if you come across some low-grade Buffalo nickels or some piles of no dates, one of the cool things is that the 1913 Type 1 Buffalo nickels are very easy to spot. You can pick them out real easily. And the reason is, is there are two different reverse styles for the Buffalo nickel. There's the Type 1 that can be found on the 1913s. And then there's the Type 2 that can be found on 1913 as well, all the way up until 1938. The Type 1 is on raised mounds. The Type 2 is not. So it's very easy to spot them. You just look for the raised mound. If you happen to see the raised mound, well, you know that's a 1913. There's no question about the date on it. Now, there are some key dates that you should be looking for when you are searching your Buffalo nickels. Now, I did separate this into two little categories. I put it into key dates and then into better grade key dates. So the main key dates that you want to be looking for that are worth money in any grade is the 1913S Type 2. Not the Type 1, the Type 2, although the Type 1 is also very valuable. The 1914D, you want to find the 1915S, the 1921S, and the 1924S. Better, better, better read. read. Now, one of the problems that Buffalo Nichols had is during minting, a lot of times they would have really weak strikes. So there are some Buffalo nickels that in higher grades, basically very fine and better, can be worth a lot of money. So those ones are 1924S, 1925S, nineteen twenty six S and nineteen twenty seven S. Now I did show a couple of those that had some auction results, like the nineteen twenty six S, there was one that sold for over a hundred and fifteen thousand and a nice high uncirculated grade. So those ones can be quite valuable. Now the key dates are your lowest mintage. The ones that I have marked as higher grade key dates, those are the ones that are just really tough to find in better grades, and it makes them worth a lot of money. So while you are searching your Buffalo nickels, you want to look for those ones and definitely put them aside. Now there are a lot of things to look for with the Buffalo nickels. There's a whole lot of interesting varieties. So we're going to go over them in categories. And the first category that we're going to start out with is over polish. Now the mint over polished quite a bit of dyes during the production of the Buffalo nickel, which gave us quite a few wonderful varieties. Um, for example, the three leg varieties and the three and a half leg varieties. So I'm going to show you the images of the 1937 D three leg. And I'm also going to show you some images of the 1936 D three and a half leg. But there are a bunch of different three leg and three and a half leg uh, varieties to look for. So you want to be checking your 1937 D's, your 1936 D's, your 1913 Type 1 Buffalo Nickels, your 1917 D Buffalo Nickels, your 1926 D 
and your 1927D. You can find three and a half leg varieties for all of those dates. Now the 1937D features the three leg variety and it has a very nice die marker that you can look for. If you look at the midsection of the bison, it looks like from the over polishing, you can see over polishing marks that resembles a pea stream coming down from the midsection of the buffalo nickel. So that is a major pickup point to look for. And the 1937D, that is a common date buffalo nickel. So you can find that one just with a regular common buffalo nickel. Now the over polishing did not just affect the reverse of the buffalo nickels. So like I said, the mint, they, they went to town with over polishing on these buffalo nickels. And because of that, on the adverse, you should be looking for what are known as two feather varieties. While looking at the adverse of the buffalo nickel, you should notice that the Native American on the adverse has three feathers. He's got two nice big ones that are obvious. And then underneath of the second feather, there's a smaller third feather. And on some of these, while they were polishing the dyes to extend the life of the working dye, they ended up accidentally over polishing and polishing away the third small feather. Now there are a bunch of dates that you can find these two feather varieties on. Now some of these two feather varieties can be worth quite a bit of money and some of them not so much. Some of them are fairly common while some of them are pretty rare. So I do suggest taking a look into all of the two feather varieties, familiarize yourself with it because there are a bunch of them. There are at least over 24 known uh, two feather varieties that I know of off the top of my head. So there's a whole bunch. Now you should be taking a look at a few examples. I will also put a list up on the screen showing you a whole bunch of the various dates that you can find these two feather varieties in. Now, while you are looking for the two feather varieties, something else to keep your eyes open for is they accidentally polished away the designer's initials on the front as well. So when you are looking over the obverse, look for that little F. Now on low grade examples, the F can be worn away due to wear. So if it's a super low grade example, it could easily be wear. But the years that you want to look for are 1913S, Type 1, 1916, and 1919. Now with the 1916, there is the no F, and there's also a two feathers variety that has the no F as well. Now that one's a really good one to find. That one does carry some nice value. So always look over the complete obverse and the complete reverse of your buffalo nickels, because there are a lot to look for, even just with the over polish. Now, something else that you're going to find quite a bit of in the Buffalo Nickel series are repunched mint marks. Well, there's quite a few mint mark varieties. There's a bunch of uh, repunched mint marks, and then there are a few over mint marks as well. But I'm going to put a list up of the main repunched mint marks that you should be looking for. Um, now, I'm going to show you a few examples. You should be looking at a 1915D over D. Now, this is a beautiful repunched mint mark. If you're taking a look at the D mint mark, you can see clear repunching to the north of the primary mint mark. Now, I'm showing you this one because this one carries some nice value. If you find this one, it definitely carries a premium over the value of the buffalo nickel. And even with the common date buffalo nickels, uh, take, for example, the 1938. There's a beautiful D over D uh, or repunched mint mark in the 1938 series that does command a nice premium. So it does pay to look for your repunched mint marks. Now, I am going to post a link down in the comments of where I pulled all of this information, which uh, for this video, I compiled most of this over at NGC's Variety Plus. So if you were to head over to NGC's Variety Plus, you can look at all of these examples, they have these listed there, and you can actually click on them and see pictures of them so that way you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. And if they don't have a picture, they do have a detailed description of exactly what it is that you should be looking for. And there are other databases that have all of this information as well. Now with the over mint marks, with the 1938, there are 
five beautiful over mint marks that you could be looking for. There are four of the D over S's and then there is a D over D over D over S. So that one's just really cool. But the over mint marks in the 1938 series do command a healthy premium. They are very sought after. People want them for their collections. So it definitely does pay to be checking the mint marks of your Buffalo Nickels as well. Now we are going to move on to double dies. There are a bunch of double dies as well in the Buffalo Nickels series. Some of them can carry some insane values, some just insanely high values, like the 1916 double die at verse. That one can carry substantial healthy premiums. And then there are just some really beautiful, highly sought after double dies, such as the 1935 double die reverse. But there's a whole lot to look for. There's even a 1926 that features a double die obverse and a double die reverse. And that is pretty scarce. It's pretty scarce to find doubling on both sides of the coin. So there are a lot of double die obverses and double die reverses that you can be looking for. You should be taking a look at some of the main ones that you can be looking for. And there are a lot more minor ones that I didn't list here as well. Okay, something else to look for with the Buffalo Nickels. Now we've got the double die of verses, we've got the double die reverses, we've got over mint marks, we've got repunch mint marks, we have the three leg varieties, we have the two feather varieties, we have the varieties missing the designer's initials. Now we're gonna get into some of the really, really valuable varieties. There are the over dates. And there are two main overdates. One in particular is just definitely worth it to look for. But you have the 1914 over three, which on this one, if you take a look down at the date, and you're looking at the 1914, you can see remnants of the three underneath of the four. So they clearly had used the die from 1913 and they reworked it into a 1914. So you can see the remnants of the three underneath of the four. And then the main one that you want to be looking for is the 1918 over seven D mint mark. Now this is a Denver mint mark, does have to have the D on the reverse. And this is the 1918 over seven. This is one of the most popular over dates in the entire nickel series. Uh, most people do know of this over date. This is extremely popular. And if you find this in any grade, it does command a healthy premium. If you are looking at the eight in the date, you can clearly see remnants of the seven behind the date and through it. If you are looking in the inside of the top loop of the eight, you can see remnants of the seven as well as in the bottom loop of the eight. So those are two very popular over dates. Now, as I had made mention, there is a lot to look for in the Buffalo Nickel series. So I do suggest familiarizing yourself with all of the various varieties. There are a lot of great references out there, such as the Cherry Pickers Guide. They list a lot of these Buffalo Nickel varieties. If you are online, I compiled most of this through NGC's Variety Plus. I will post a link to it. I do suggest going over there and familiarizing yourself with these because the examples that NGC lists on Variety Plus are the exact ones that they will attribute and put in a holder for you. So if you happen to have one of those, you already know that NGC will grade it, which that's a good thing to know. So there you go. Hopefully this helped you along your coin searching path with Buffalo Nichols. Okay there, YouTube coin community. Real quick, I wanted to talk about the Luxy app. Now, I did mention the Luxy app in a prior video. Now, if you are looking for an app to image your coins, to store those images of your coins in a collection, so you can always keep track of your coins, and to be able to share those images immediately with fellow like-minded collectors, or to immediately upload them to a social platform of your choosing or email, etc. Well, then the Luxy app is right for you. Now, I will post links to the app down in the comments. 
it is free. Do keep in mind the Looksee app is 100% free. It's free to download, it's free to use. So make sure you go check it out, download it, give it a whirl. You can find me on that app if you take an image of your coin and post that image to the chat. I might just be one of the ones to comment on it. Now, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. The more that you interact with our YouTube channel, the more it encourages YouTube to share our content with more and more people. Also by subscribing. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, click on that subscribe button. And while you are at it, click on the notification bell. That way you get notified immediately when we upload new content. Well, everyone, until next time, have fun.